welcome uh, today. I hope you're enjoying your visit so far for the people who are here since 12 o'clock. I hope you will enjoy your visit afterwards. Um, this, is part, um, this is a 10 minutes talk uh, part of our usually, our, it's a monthly appointment that we have every first Thursday of the month at 12.45. Uh, 12 so if you want to keep if you want to have knowledge of the other one, they are all listed on our website and what's on events. But I'm here today to talk about Tana, the Tana's relationship with the River Thames. Um, of course, it was quite close. Uh, we have a lovely exhibition going on regarding, regarding this. And um, Richmond and Twickenham were actually uh, very popular places for aristoc aristocrats and wealthy people to spend your, their holiday here. So when they wanted somewhere to, um, somewhere to retreat, somewhere to relax, they would come to Twickenham or Richmond. So it was quite fashionable at the time. But Turner didn't choose Twickenham because of, because of the fashion of the time, of course. He had quite a lot, uh, quite a lot of links to this area. He was there, made this area special. Uh, of course, Thames Sims provided him uh, the first, the, uh, uh, the first application never made in oil painting at the Royal Academy. This is the uh, Midnight on the Mill Bank. It's a study. This is the first oil painting that Tanner ever uh, uh, submitted to the Royal Academy. So, and of course, he often he often returned to the Thames for sketching and made paintings of it. So he, we had quite a long time. Uh, he stayed in the area, came often back and forth. All this time in Twick, all the time he spent in, in, in Twickenham by the River Thames, actually helped him to improve the, his watercolor skills, and also um, gave him the uh, gave him the skill to actually uh, paint quickly, so he could catch all the details, all the changes of reflection and lights that exist in nature. So it was quite a good period for him. The River Thames gave him all all the good things to move his art forward. But the story with the Thames and Tanner becomes when he was, uh, starts when he was very, very young. Uh, when he was 10 years old, he was sent to Brentford to stay with his uncle, Joseph Muller William Marshall, who was uh, a, a brother of his mother, of Tanner's mother, and he was a butcher there. And actually, Tanner spent a lot of time in Brentford. He uh, attended school there, and he, of course, walk along the river Thames and looking at all the scenes and landscape that the river offers. And it was in this period of his life that actually Turner uh, started to be passionate about nature, <coughs> passionate about the landscape that the river gave him. Um, but it was only in the 1719, uh, in 17, I don't want to get it wrong, in 1789 that actually Turner started to, uh, to uh, go on the river Thames to sketch and uh, cap capture all the scenes and the light. So it will, there is a nice um, there is a nice sketchbook called uh, Oxford, the Oxford uh, sketchbook, uh, which the sketches seems to be taken from a boat on the River Thames, so they're quite nice. And he will have used some of these sketches to produce finalized illustration for the architect Thomas Hardwick, who was a friend of his uncle too. So it will be the start of his career as well. He was, of course, um, uh, accepted at the Royal Academy, and he spent spent 15 years spent before Tarnan could actually go back to the River Thames. He, he go back in 1805. Um, he was quite a young, a rich man. It's quite the story of the of this house. Um, in, um, he was a member of the Royal Academy now. Uh, he was a professor of perspective. He had a private studio and private gallery in central London. So he quite has a lot going on in his life and he needed a place to live, uh, especially because he had Sarah Denby's mistress at the time and he had the two daughters for, uh, from her as well, so he was quite a bit overwhelmed, he quite didn't like being a family man. And uh, so he went to Isleworth and he spent the, quite a long time, he, he rented Siam Ferry House and he made a lot of sketches around Isleworth, Windsor and Walton Ridge because he, he always uh, traveled back and forth from there. And in this, in this period, he actually painted 18 wooden panels. Some of them are in our exhibition room <coughs> in this period. And um, they are, these are quite particular because he painted, him, uh, he painted them on um, probably scratch from 
old furniture that you might have think they were quite handy and quite a good size to, to bring uh, outside and paint on them. And he would have prepared some of them with a white, a white base. Some are used, uh, uh, some, sometimes you would have used naked wood, actually using it to recreate the reflection in the water. They are quite special and rare because Steiner, it was the first and last time that Steiner actually painted in, with oil painting in nature. He didn't quite like it because he, find, he found uh, sketching in, uh, in nature with oil paint quite challenging. The type of wood that he chose in was quite dry, so he would have sucked lots of painting. So he didn't have time to do a readjustment, to go back and adjust. So what you, what you can see in those paintings is the first, uh, is the first brush stroke, the, time for the, fir the first coat. So you will see a bit of struggling sometimes, and they are quite spontaneous, that's quite good. Tanner will have done these paintings on, uh, in the River Thames on a boat that he uh, uh, probably designed himself. I, I'm, I'm going to pass to you some uh, sketches he made of this, of this uh, boat. So there's something else that he, he designed. So he quite like designed things for himself to make them exactly the perfect way for his need. These, paint, these 18 paintings that he did, these 18 sketches that he did were quite important for the developing of his painting as well, of, of his technique. So after this period, uh, he actually brought forward the use of the oil painting and he created a beautiful and very important painting in, the, in his career. Um, he didn't, um, Turner didn't have the same uh, chance as uh, other great artists from the past that to travel to Europe. Because of course, even though the, uh, England gained the victory in the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, actually the uh, Napoleonic Wars ended in 1815, so 10 years after. So it was quite difficult to uh, travel to Europe at the time. So Turner couldn't actually uh, go, uh, could, do, couldn't do this. But actually he found that it was a good compromise for him living in Twickenham to escape from, his, from the hard time he had given him. That's why in 1807 when he was staying in Hammersmith, uh, he bought two plots of land in Twickenham, the bigger one being the one where, being the one where he built this house actually on his own design and the special thing. Another thing that he designed himself. And during his time here, he would have often went on the River Thames, uh, walk along it or, or sailed it. He would have made lots of sketches. He would have done a lot of fishing. He really loved fishing. He would have, um, he would have gone for fishing trips with the, ar the architect Sir John who was a very friend, a close friend of Tana, or the sculptor uh, Francis Chantry. And actually, Tana and his garden had two large ponds where he kept. The, the fish coat during these trips when you wanted um, not having a fridge at the time of course and you will have done some sketches of this of the coat that we have done on the day so this is quite a nice um, a nice illustration in the study of fish uh, of, on a coat on a, on a fishing trip day you will have caught those four roughly four fish I don't know if it's quite a good number for the real attempts. But the real attempts at the time was very different from the one that we have today. It, is, um, it was, um, was much greener, full of fish, so it would have been a good place uh, for, for fishing. Um, the, um, the view that probably Tarn inspired most here in Richmond was, of course, the one from <coughs> Richmond Hill. Uh, the view from the Richmond Hill, being is very, uh, this view being protected by an act of parliament as well, so nobody can build to uh, uh, obstruct that view, so it's quite an important view. And many, many artists and poets have, have, have been inspired by that view. Many, many painters have painted scene, and some poets have also, uh, also written poems about the view of the much, much less veiled Thames. And, of course, Turner as well, had made a lot of uh, had made a lot of <coughs> sketches. Uh, this is a sketch. It's quite it's quite light. I'm gonna bring it around. Uh, so he made quite <coughs> not, some sketches. He made uh, important paintings like England. I'm gonna leave, read the title: England, Richmond Hill on the Prince Regent's birthday in 1819, which is the image I'm gonna uh, show you now. Or he get inspired by. Use the scene to actually um, reproduce poems 
Hyde Venus is the Thomson uh, Aeolian Arc, he made in later in 1836. And this is another, this is a print made after one of Tana's painting about the view of from Richmond Terrace. So this is the same from Richmond Terrace. Turner also used the views from the River Thames to uh, uh, use them like a frame for mythological scene and historic paintings. Of course, Turner was uh, inspired by uh, poet, poets like Alexander Pope, who also lived also in the area uh, where Pope's Grotto is now. And uh, the house doesn't exist anymore, um, was demolished and Turner was very upset about it. He wrote a poem and that paints a huge painting about it as well. Uh, or um, the, uh, the, po the poet James Thompson, who actually gave the definition of the much, le the much less veil of the Thames at uh, the view from the region <coughs> here. And also, Tannen was inspired by Greek, uh, by Greek writers too. So he would have used the Thames landscape to uh, actually uh, create the frame of the <coughs> environment for this uh, beautiful scene, from mythological scenes. Um, this, for example, is Isleworth, but you use it for um, a scene of Dido and Aeneas. So that's something else that you can look at. So it's quite. So Tani used, really, really loved the Thames, really use it a lot in his paintings. In 1826, he, he sold Sandycombe Lodge uh, to Joseph Todd, and then we think he's, he, uh, that's actually the end of the period, of Tani's period closest to the Thames. But of course, all these scenes. You could finally travel to Europe because the Napoleonic War were ended. So he didn't need the country house anymore because he could actually travel and fulfill his dream. And but Turner's scene, uh, the Thames scenes always uh, Turner's always kept these scenes in, in his arms and actually would have kept painting by memory all the ten, all all the scenes from the River Thames. So this is quite was quite an important place for Turner. So this is like the short talk uh, for today. Uh, some references that can be useful if you want to know more about it is, um, this is quite a rare book, I'm afraid. It's uh, is, um, Time and the Thames by David Hill, or you can have a look at A Year of Time and the Thames by Roger Williams. And also, which is also available in our bookshop, <laughs> is um, by Catherine Perry Winfield, who was actually the lady who brought all these projects up. Um, is, uh, is called Jane W. Tanner and the Matchless Fable of Thames. So they are quite good, uh, <coughs> good books that you can you can have a look at if you want to. So thank you for joining me on this. Turner's House is a registered charity. For further information, please visit our website at www.turnershouse.org. The website will also provide you further information on how you can support us into the future. Thank you.